Hello everyone, my name is Pony the Genius and today we're back in Genshin Impact 3.0 Sumeru. Let's go, we're going the wrong way. We're going to continue from here on out. We're going to go to the Grand Bazaar. Whoa, nice! Opening automatic doors. Oh, Nilu. Uh, sorry, I'm late, Nilu. Oh, doing your zod. It was taking you so long that I assumed you got trapped at home, but you made it in the end. Uh oh. But if Dia's here, that means you got caught, right? You could say that, sir. But everything worked out. She's on our side now. Oh, okay. Yep. <laughs> Uh, not completely. Oh, and who are these two? Oh, meet the Traveler and Paimon, my two newest friends. They're visitors who just arrived at Sumera City and are looking for information on Lesser Lord Kusanali. So you're followers from another land? <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's wonderful. You two absolutely must have missed the Sabzerius Festival. Ah, uh, yes. By oh. the way, Dunyarzad. We've already started decorating the Grand Bazaar. It looks spectacular. Thanks to your generous contribution. You're very welcome. It's the only thing I could do. Do you still have enough Mora? Oh my gosh, the Mora? Uh, probably? But don't sweat it. We've already finished renovating the stage. Come on, I'll show you. It's all about Mora in this world, in Tavat. <clears throat> Snezhnaya, oh my goodness, they're starting up a competition of toy selling. Sumeru versus Snezhnaya, everyone. Wow, this place is amazing! I can agree with you, Not Paimon. Huh. Last time I was here, the stairs were full of holes. <laughs> the stairs were nothing. A little while ago, he discovered that the tree above the stage had a huge chunk of bark ready to fall off. Mr. Zubair was worried sick. We reported it to the Academia many times, but they never sent anyone to deal with it. We didn't want anything bad happening, so we were going to cancel all the stage performances. <coughs> Why didn't anyone come to handle it? Oh, probably because it was the theater asking. Uh, the Academia looks down on performers like us. They probably think it would be best if the theater closed down completely. We can't let that happen, though. Not only would everyone involved in the theater go hungry, but then we wouldn't be able to hold the Subzerus Festival anymore. Thank the Denger Archon for doing your Zod. But the more she gave us, we hired someone to patch up the tree, and we also gave the stage a much-needed makeover. The stage is going to be even prettier when it's festival time. I can't wait for you to see it. Carpet dancing? And I can't wait to see you on the stage. You've been practicing so long already. It's almost time for your dream to become reality. <laughs> it's our dream. I'll do my best for the two of us. Nilu, what are you going to be doing at the festival? She'll be dancing the dance of Subzeros. The most important performance at the Subzeros Festival. Ah. Tenerzad, have you told them the origin of this holiday? I only told them about the Greater Lord and Lesser Lord so far. Okay. Then I'll tell you two about how this holiday came to be. According to legend, the Subzeros Festival was originally the Goddess of Flowers' birthday celebration for the Greater Lord. A long, long time ago, on one of Greater Lord Rukadevata's birthdays, her friends threw her a celebratory banquet. Some of the gods got drunk. One started playing music, and the greater word started singing. So the goddess of flowers began to dance. Oh. As she danced upon the grass, countless beautiful parisars began to bloom wherever she stepped. Those brilliant purple flowers became her dazzling stage. All the gods clamored, oh, if only time could stop at this very moment. Hmm. Sounds like they had a great time. Of course they did. When people mention the gods, they always 
think of the Archon War. Oh. But Sumeru's gods also had happy times. Oh, okay. Although they aren't around anymore, they're preserved in our tradition of dance. This outfit I'm wearing is apparently based on how the goddess of flowers looked. Though we're just tiny people compared to the divine, we still have to do our best to make sure that the birthday girl feels loved on her special day. Nilu, you of all people will definitely be able to convey our well wishes to the Dendro Archon. I also noticed that you went the extra mile and scattered Padisaras around the stage. <laughs> they symbolize the goddess of flowers, after all. It's just a shame that all the real Padisaras went extinct after her death. Yeah. The Greater Lord brought forth Padisaras in memory of the goddess of flowers. And she ultimately could never truly replicate that beautiful purple. Thinking about the goddess of flowers dance makes me wish I could have seen it. If my stage were anything like that, uh, I'd be thrilled if I had just two real Padisaras on the stage. Uh, so, Traveler in Paimon, what do you think? Interested in the Sabzeris Festival? Will you two be coming? All of Lesser Lord Kusanelli's followers will be there for her birthday. It'll be a good opportunity for you to learn more about her. Ah, uh, so we're gonna go there. I don't know what to say at this point. You sure? It's not fun. It's not because you want in on the fun. You, you sure it's not because you want to watch Nilu dance? Uh, this. So how about we all attend the Subzeris festival together? Sounds like a plan. Let me show you which stage decorations we've picked out so far. Traveler in Paimon, if that doesn't sound interesting to you, then feel free to explore the area. Everyone at the Grand Bazaar loves Lesser Lord Kusanali, and we're all looking forward to the Subzeris festival. In that case, we'll take a look around! Yep, okay, we're talking all... Well, all five people. Alright, let's talk to you first. Kamari. Whoa! What's with your yellow hair? <laughs> and why do your clothes look so funny? Are you an outlander? Obviously! Do you know that the Sabzeris festival is about to happen? There'll be loads of fun things to do at the festival. The best part is when Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, passes out candy to everyone! Oh, you like candy. What about the dog beside you? Okay, let's talk to Dea. Huh, revamping the stage for the festival couldn't have been easy, that's for sure. I bet this year's festival will be one to remember. I don't know much about the Grand Bazaar, but I do know that the residents here have a penchant for song and dance. <laughs> Two things that the academia doesn't particularly approve of. Oh, and the perfume sold around here is a lot better than what you'll find elsewhere. The fragrances are longer lasting and they're gentler on your skin and... Uh, I mean, <clears throat> that's uh, what I've heard at least. Alright, okay, let's talk to this porter. Things are really shaping up and there's a buzz around the festival this year. We're expecting people from all over to come by this year and buy things during the festivities. Don't be fooled into thinking that Sumeru City has the best of everything. Some festival snacks are only offered here in the Grand Bazaar. And when it comes to musicians, dancers, or singers, the Grand Bazaar's got the best of the best. Sure, those folks at the Academia might not like it, but what's a festival without song and dance? Okay, I keep hearing academia. I think everyone has like a problem with academia and stuff, but I don't know why yet. Okay, let's just talk to this elderly right here. Ah, dancing at the Subzeros Festival. You know, I also danced when I was younger. As a child, I even asked my grandmother why we performed the dance for the Lesser Lord when it was originally done to honor the Greater Lord. My grandmother said that Greater Lord Rukadavata is a beloved deity and honored by all. 
and lesser Lord Kusanali is too. If the goddess of flowers ever knew lesser Lord Kusanali, then she would certainly have wished to be her friend and hold celebrations for her too. Oh, okay. The Subzeru's festival has been losing its appeal over the years. Hmm. That is, until a wealthy benefactor stepped in this year and brought the festival back to life. I heard she forked out a lot of mora to make it all happen. Ooh. Okay, one last person is up there in the stage. <laughs> Don Yarzard here. Nilu, your outfit looks amazing. There's also something different about you from when we first met up. <laughs> I thought I'd add a little extra pizzazz to my dress for the festival. See? Wow, did you sew all that yourself? Uh-huh. Sewing is a fundamental skill for everyone in the theater company because we make all our own costumes. Did you know that Mr. Zubair not only can make costumes, but props too? <laughs> I've noticed that you can't keep your eyes off that crown over there. Would you like to try it on? <laughs> May I? Of course. The legends say that the goddess of flowers had beautiful horns on her head. So this crown was made to reflect that. Ah, oh. oh, Junior Zod. You look absolutely stunning with it on. It's like I'm looking at the goddess of flowers herself. Wait, why is Catherine all the way out here? Very rare occasion, if you ask me. What? Huh. Come to think of it, Hyman's only ever seen her behind the counter at the Adventurers Guild. This is the first time we've ever seen her taking a break. Hey, Catherine! Hmm? Oh, hey! It's the Traveler and Paimon! Oh, what's shaking? Whoa! Break time Catherine sure sounds a lot less formal than usual. Paimon was still waiting for her to say Ad Astra Abyssosk. No. Oh. Sure. <laughs> Standing behind the counter at the Adventurer's Guild doesn't require any complicated functions. But saying and doing the same old things over and over again can get pretty monotonous. Like watching the same Fontaine movie day after day. Oh. But take you two for example. You travel across to VAT to enrich your lives and gain new experiences. Well, we enjoy traveling across to VAT and all that, but we're mainly looking for clues about her brother. Yes. You should keep searching. Sometimes the answers we're looking for aren't necessarily at our intended destination. Instead, they're found along the way. Huh. Haven't we heard someone say something pretty similar recently? Uh, anyways, what brings you out here, Catherine? Are you also a fan of the Subverse? Subzerus Festival? No, not particularly. I guess you could say that I'm loving the recent atmosphere here. If festivals bring happiness to everyone, then that's where their true value lies. Oh, it looks like it's about time for me to be heading back now. Alright, we'll see you next time at the Adventures Guild. Oh, by the way, thanks for connecting us with the Aramites. We've already made some great friends in Sumeru City thanks to you. I'm sure you two will get along well with the people here. You've already been blessed by the element of Dendro, after all. <laughs> see you around! Oh, see you, Catherine. Hmm. There's something really different about Catherine today. Hey, Traveler. Paimon. Oh, hey, Dia. What's going on? I've got something to tell ya. My lady knows you're looking for ways to meet Lesser Lord Kusanali, and she's been trying to come up with a way to help you. Well, I have an idea that might help. Are you serious? We love that! 
It might not necessarily pan out, so don't get your hopes up too much. I'll need to take you two somewhere and ask someone some questions. What about Dunn's yard? Uh, my lady is feeling a little worn out at the moment. Nilu's found a place for her to rest. After I take my lady home, let's meet in front of the Citadel of Rexar. Sounds like a plan! Oh. Let's head over to the Citadel of Rexar and wait for Dia! Alright. I love the door opening animation right there. Okay, right here, is it? Sorry, I'm late. It took some convincing for the master and mistress to believe that Miss Dunyarzad was only sitting in the port for a while because she was in a bad mood. Anyway, I guess I should be thanking you. I haven't seen Miss Dunyarzad that happy in a long time. If it wasn't for you two, she probably would have been caught and dragged back much earlier. Oh. You sure sound a whole lot nicer than when we first met, Dia. Who would have thought you had such a soft spot for Dunyarzad? It, it, it's called being a professional. I'm a bodyguard, and I work for whoever's paying. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Dia's blushing. Yep, that's a blush if I've ever seen one. <sighs> Listen, you two. Oh. I don't expect to be working for Miss Dunyarzad very long, but I hope to finish things on a positive note if possible. Let's cut the chit chat and head into the Citadel. We'll see if the person I know has a way for you two to meet with the Lesser Lord. Hey. Oh, a nice transition. Chief. Oh, him? Ah, <laughs> Dinya. What are you doing here? <clears throat> well, didn't expect to see you three together. <laughs> I take it you all know each other already? Mm -hmm. We met this morning after the Avengers Guild pointed us to Ozpot for more info. No kidding. Hmm. So, where's Ruksha? I thought I'd help these two out by asking about the theft. Anything you can tell him? Rukshaw's gone over to the Academia. The Grand Sage recently ordered Sumero City to begin bolstering its defenses. So people from all over have been called back to the city. <clears throat> Since you've already mentioned the theft, I suppose I might as well tell him what we know. Appreciate it, Chief. Uh, theft? Sorry, what the heck are you guys talking about? Okay, Just that confuses me too. Lost something. And there's a chance the item is connected with the Dendro Archon. This case might just somehow help you in meeting her. I, I suppose that's one way to look at it. If you ask me, the case is more about the Academia than anything else. Academia? Yeah. The Academia recently sent a convoy to pick up an important package from Aru Village. Word got out and the convoy was robbed on its way back. Okay, what I'm noticing here is Academia is like the word on the street for the letter A. <laughs> academia, this Academia, that. The Grand Sage took the whole matter very seriously. Not only did he dispatch the Matra, but also enlisted our help in the search for leads. All we know so far is that whatever was stolen is currently in Port Ormos. Port Ormos? You still have heard of Port Ormos, haven't you? It's the largest commercial port in all of Sumeru. You can travel there by leaving Sumeru City and heading south along the river. The Academia's grip isn't long enough to reach all the way to Port Ormos, so the city's a little more laid back, meaning the population's also a mixed bag. You never know who you'll meet there. Apparently what was lost has a great deal to do with the Akasha, knowledge, and even the gods. I'm afraid I don't have any other details for you, though. If you're interested, maybe you can head to Port Ormos and ask around yourselves. If you want my advice, try introducing yourselves as students of the Academia once you're there. Huh? The students of Academia? Are you serious, Chief? All the Academia students are in Sumeru City, you know. Why should they pretend to be students in Port Ormos? <laughs> if you're also interested, 
Just go there and see what happens. Count me out. I've got plenty of work to do here for the Homayani family. And take it from me, if you two really do decide to visit Port Ormos, you best watch your backs. Let's just say that the Aramites there aren't nearly as friendly as those here in Sumeru City. Oh. There are even some extremists who go around shouting slogans like, Retake Sumeru for the Scarlet King. Word is that more and more are joining their movement. They're becoming a real headache for Chief and the others. You bet they are. The Scarlet King's been dead for thousands of years. Now they start spreading rumors of his return. Ridiculous. Not everyone's like you, Chief. Even the desert natives who abandoned their homes in the wilderness still wish to have a god of their own. <sighs> well, Traveler, that's about all the information we have for you. Oh. Thanks, Dia. And you too, Oton. Since we've gathered all we could for the moment in Sumeru City, let's head to Port Ormos and see what we can find next. Miss Dunyarzad is looking forward to seeing you both at the Subzeru's Festival, so... Be sure to get yourselves back here in time for that. Yep, we won't forget. Good. Then we'll see you both at the Subzeru's festival. Alright, we've done that. Now well, let's go. Lost in Propers. Oh, Ross Lost in Prosperity. So there are... Okay, so there's one. Go to Port Omis. That is so far. All right, a little adventuring will hurt. So, 1000 miles. Let me check my battle pass. Uh, and let's go. We can just get that waypoint all over there if I can. Hmm. No, it only reacts to Dendro. Okay. What is that? Oh, so that's what it does. Let me just get this first. Waypoint. I mean, viewpoint. Alright. Right. So, we're supposed to be going this way. Let's get this. Whee! Is that Aramites? Ew. You're in for a little shock. You've been a naughty boy. Let it rain. These guys can't even touch me. Whoa, lag. Okay. My game kind of lagged right there. Don't mind me. If only I stumbled upon lab supplies as often. Okay. So we should... Wait, what is that? Is that... Can I ride in this thing? Or... It's a boat, abandoned boat in the nowhere. Hmm. Ooh, what are those? I don't even know the name of those, and I accidentally called them a lamp. Hello? Oh! <gasps> That's a big one! Oi! What are you doing? Stay clear. Oh, 
Dang. They pack a lot of meat. What is that? Oh, Zayton Peach. Wait, they actually are enemies? Wait, useless. Ah. Useful stuff. Oh! Oh! Dang! Boom. I'm gonna collect these. Oh. That's close enough. <laughs> this might lag. <laughs> Holy smokes! That crit was crazy. Oh, they hit Dendro. Okay. Bye. My goodness. Ooh, my Lisa just crit right there like crazy. Unfortunately, I just battled there for nothing, but maybe something important for the future. Based on which characters I might own and get. Alright, let's follow the Sealy. Collecting items is satisfying for me. I like the sounds that they make when I just pick them up. And press the letter F. Every F is respect. Is this a withering zone? Let me just see. Sorry, Amber. That's a withering zone. Sorry. I'm not going there. I'm going the wrong way for sure. But I need to go to my destination. Port Ormos. Oh, treasure chest. Give it to me. I'll race you there. <laughs> Try not to enjoy this too much. No escape. <laughs> Animal test 6308. <laughs> Let's dance. <laughs> You're kind of near. Well, not even close to near. Alright. What is that? Is that a. Is that a lynx? Oh, more meat for me. I wonder where the alligators are. Okay. Hmm. 
Wait. What happens if I shoot that? Oh. No! What am I doing? Stop moving! Ah! Oh, there's a wittering zone. Okay. Gotta be careful. Oh no! Animal hyperspace simulation. Hey. Every time you get hit with those things, Come a little closer. <laughs> this is a nightmare. One down. Okay, the music right here is so disturbingly... Okay, stay back. Whoop. Okay. Yeah. And then there's more? What is that? Okay, a ruined drake. Earth guard. Oh. A ruined machine that can absorb energy and hurl it back as an attack. The ruined drake, earth guard, can period. No. Periodically release a dangerous torrent of energy and increase its own elemental resist. And against the previous main type of element dam damage it suffer when it is preparing to unleash it this energy torrent or when it's preparing for a special sprint attack the core on its head will be exposed take this opportunity to attack the core and you may able you may be able to immobilize this creature and undo its elemental rest boost oh oh gosh I'm gonna get rid of Oh gosh, thank goodness. Go, go, Baron, oh no! Come on, we can do it. I need to. Okay, relax, chill, chill, yeah. chill. This is so uncommon for me to be running away like this. It looks like it has no intention to attack us. Oh. 
Oh no! Oh no! No! You know. Oh my goodness. Let it rain. There, one down. Oh no, do not hit me. There. Thing. We go quick. Wait, you what are you? Why are you ignoring me? You're not an enemy. No. Oh my goodness, the that is so we can follow a machine now okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we're kind of we're almost there what is that mm, what's that So I'm gonna save that for another time. There's a wittering zone right here. Come a 
come a little closer. Blitz. Get over here. Oh my goodness, that meme. Let's spark things up a little. Let's clear this. Okay. Oh! There. Whoa! I forgot about that. Holy smokes, the crits! of my Barbara. Yeah. No, Barbara go. Hi. Mwah. I did it. Wow, so many raw materials. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> oh, teachings of praxis. Hmm. Yeah. Right now we're focusing on getting to Oh no. I forgot to go get the statue of the seven. Oh well. I'm gonna get that back once I'm done here. Uh, is the city here? Port? or must here we go oh there's a waypoint here so we're good Yourself. 
traditional spices of the highest quality, made with pride and experience. <laughs> You've got a deal. I can't thank you enough for always looking after my business. Believe me, I'm not making this up. Several Eremite mercenary groups are nearly in open conflict. But does the core of 30 care? <sighs> and that's not all. Did you know that... Does Dory... Is Dory here? figure out that uh right we should figure that out before doing anything else oh okay now more asking around ask a nearby merchant for information a tailor Welcome. Welcome. Uh, how can I help you two? Uh, hi there. We'd like to ask you a question. Um, do students from the academia ever come to Port Ormos? <laughs> of course. Especially around this time of year. Students from Samaro City that are about to graduate often come to Port Ormos to cut loose of them. Many people often talk about how hard it is to get accepted into the academia, let alone graduate. But those who finish their studies and go on to become full-time researchers at the academia have it even harder. Sure, we may not be Sumero City, but Port Ormos offers beautiful scenery and a stress-free environment. Some even say it's good luck to come to Port Ormos. So students and researchers come flocking here when things get to be too much at the academia. Ah, you see over there? Those are students from the academia. They look pretty serious. They've been miserable ever since they got here a few days ago. If you ask me, the life of a merchant is better. So long as the Akasha teaches us what we need, then life is good. Students seem to be discussing something. Let's see if we can listen in. It's no good. I've tried asking around, but I haven't been able to learn anything useful. Not to mention that a bunch of scary-looking Aramite mercenaries have been posted along the streets now. There's been a lot of fighting between the different Aramite factions in Port Ormos. We choose to move on our own, but it would be wise to steer clear of them. Especially the group that's constantly shouting some stuff about the Scarlet King and some resurrection. I've even heard that the Citadel of Regzar is starting to get fed up with them. What was that group called again? Ein something or other? They're called Ein El Achmar. Today, I heard that the thing we're after might be in their possession at the moment. Wait, come again? Don't you see? Many of the Aramites in Port Ormos deal with treating this kind of thing. They're usually pretty wary of outsiders, but not so with students of the academia. It's because the kind of goods that students are looking for aren't the kind of goods that Aramites are after. As long as they know you're a student, then deals can be made. I've heard that Ain el likes to set up shop at the Jafar Tavern. Supposedly, if you're willing to part with half a million Mura, he'll give you info on anything. Wait, did you say half a million? If information alone costs that much, then how could we ever afford to buy what we're looking for? <sighs> I guess we might as well give up on trying to graduate this way. 
I wouldn't worry too much. Our field of research is very niche. Who else could possibly be after that kind of shady knowledge? I bet it's practically worthless to anyone aside from us. Well, I guess that makes sense. And the only thing left for us now is to find a way in. Why don't we all just pool our money together and pay for the information? Oh. Whoa. Did you hear that? A niche field of research and shady knowledge? It all sounds pretty suspicious to my mind. Is knowledge something people just buy and sell like that? Very suspicious indeed. So, what's your plan? Uh, let's go to the the far. Let's go to the Jafar Tavern. Wait, didn't you hear what they just said? Buying information is going to cost us half a million more. Have you lost your mind? Reliable information is worth the price. I won't let them off easy if it turns out to be a scam. Oh, alright. I would never thought you'd agree to party with that kind of mora. But if you know what you're doing, then we should give it a shot. We're not gonna spend the money, uh, by the way. Okay, go to Jafar Tarvin. Tavern. Oh, it's lower. Okay, we're here. This is the place we heard those students talking about. Okay, we'll lost in property. Okay, you sit down and wait for some time. Oh, you've arrived. Please take a seat. So, they think that they can go toe to toe with the boss? <laughs> Once we reclaim the power of the Scarlet King, they'll be the first that the boss punishes. <laughs> They're nothing to be afraid of. Our main rival now is the Caracal Battalion. They've also amassed a significant amount of more this time, so we mustn't underestimate them. How can the Caracal Battalion compete with the boss when they're nothing but a bunch of money-grubbing opportunists out for a quick mora? Yeah, with boss's fervent devotion, he'll be able to use this power to bring our god back this time. Huh. All these guys talk about is the Scarlet King, so they're the ones we're looking for. <laughs> Greater Lord Ruka That traitor and her followers must not be spared. The day will come when the Scarlet King exacts vengeance on Sumeru, and all of them shall be punished. Uh, what are they talking about? Yeah, Ivan was wondering what they did too. Ugh. We should ask about that if we get the chance later. Mm hmm. Okay. Wait. Huh? Who are you? What do you want? I'm a traveler. A traveler? Uh, now's probably not the time to talk about that. Didn't the students say Aramites are wary of outsiders? I'm a student from academia. A student? <laughs> What's a student from Sumeru City doing in Port Ormos? Uh, I'm looking for <laughs> info about a student something. Ah, well if it's info you want, you've come to the right place. The question is, can you afford it? Huh? What is this? Some kind of joke? Oh! <laughs> Sorry! She must have grabbed the wrong amount! <laughs> hey, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> Hand him. <laughs> oh, I'm playing dumb, Here, guys. This is the merchant's address. Whatever you're looking for, you'll find it there. Hmm? Well, what are you waiting for? I just have one more question. Oh, that's right. We heard you mentioned the Scarlet King just now. We're actually interested to know more because... Uh, the Scarlet King is very much alive and well. Uh, Archie, I'll... Fine. Since you've already handed over the Mora, I guess I can throw in a little extra info. 
As you can see, members of Ain al Ahmar are devout believers of the Scarlet King. Oh. Years ago, the Scarlet King founded the great desert nation that was our homeland. It was an advanced civilization, far beyond anything you'll see in present day Sumer. Oh. The Scarlet King was the rightful god of wisdom, but he was betrayed by a companion he trusted. She even stripped him of his title, God of Wisdom. So, you mean the traitor was. Greater Lord Ruka Devata, yes. That shameless wretch destroyed the Scarlet King's civilization. And our ancestors were forced to flee to this land, where we were made to suffer the tyranny of our enemies. Aww. Furthermore, she conspired with the Academia to cover up the truth of her actions, and create the merciful and benevolent facade for which she is now known. Ugh. Just thinking about it sickens me! This actually reminds me of, like, this- the first part of the Jean Lee story quest. Like, there's this researcher who's researching the god of salt and well she turns out not to be be like a, a researcher is actually a follower of the goddess of salt and i think this is involved with this guy too guys too they think the god of wisdom is the traitor and the Scarlet King is the rightful wisdom of God. The wisdom of God, I mean. <sighs> but the story doesn't end there, oh no. The Scarlet King isn't truly dead. The voice of the Oracle has been heard in the desert, prophesying his resurrection. Mark my words, our God shall return. And when that day comes, all followers of the traitor and all the desert dwellers who have forgotten their true god will suffer retribution together. If what I'm saying makes you shiver with fear, it might not be too late for you to become a believer of the Scarlet King. <laughs> uh, can you tell us more about the Oracle? I don't have anything to say to you academia people about that. I think this conversation has reached its end. Not just yet. This man is a fraud. <gasps> oh, it's him. You again? <laughs> Deranged academia lunatic. Yes, it's me again. I already warned you that if you weren't willing to sit and discuss things with me, I'd take measures to make things uncomfortable for you. Listen to me. That address he gave you is fake. Or at least, you won't find a merchant waiting for you there. This group has been boasting all around that they can provide information on a certain item as a means of luring people into their territory. Once you show up, they keep up the act until they have hard evidence that you want to purchase said item. Then they use that to squeeze you for all the more of your worth. Oh. Hey, shut it all, Haytham! What are you playing at trying to ruin our business like this, hmm? I told you the other day. I wish to discuss my terms with your boss. Ha! The boss made it perfectly clear that he won't negotiate with you. Oh, yes, and in no uncertain him. terms. But that was then. It does not preclude him from changing his mind in the future. I'm warning you, don't push us, or this could get ugly. We don't usually get rough with people from the academia because it just complicates things. For a lunatic like you, though, we might just have to make an exception. If you're suggesting that we escalate this from a verbal exchange to a physical one, I accept. After all, even the Archons used war to negotiate the ownership of Tabat. If, on the other hand, we can't agree on any means of negotiation at all, then I'm afraid my next course of action will sting a little more than the mere falling through of a few business deals. I will jeopardize the Aramite's reputation, which I know you value above all else. I am quite confident that if I began to take such action, your boss would willingly approach me himself. However, I fear that by then, some things will have happened that cannot be undone. Also, a word of advice. I suggest you tell your boss exactly what happened here today. Otherwise, he might blame you for not telling him in the future. What did you say? Consider this. Have I ever failed to follow through on my word in the past? This guy is really out of his mind. 
Okay, then. If you really have a death wish, let's meet a week from today. The pier in front of the Faros Lighthouse, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, sharp. Don't expect us to hold back. Not so fast. First, you return the 500,000 more to them. Hm. Okay. We got our money back. I Please, mean, more. I beg you, don't provoke them. We can't afford any trouble with this crowd. They haven't even paid for their food yet. Ah, Mr. Iman. There appears to be fewer staff in the restaurant recently. This wouldn't happen to be because they're all busy spreading the word to the students, would it? I, uh, well... <laughs> someone who chooses to do business with a group like that really can't afford to get so flustered the instant someone confronts them about it. Consider the meal compensation for our silence. I'd say you're getting an excellent deal. I'm gonna come watch me. Whoa. What do you want? Thank you for your help back there. No need for thanks. My goal was to get to them, and you two gave me just the opportunity I needed. We're even. Oh, I advise you to keep your distance from them. Since they weren't able to make off with your mora in the end, they might harass you again in the future. Okay. Alright. Goodbye. Ooh, just like that? I'm a student from the academia. A student. <laughs> right. Look, you should know that those thugs conducting business with you had nothing to do with your lie. Perhaps we can also talk terms. Huh? Oh, yeah. She's really strong. Weren't you saying something about a physical exchange? We can help with that. <laughs> she doesn't even have a vision. Forget it. Maybe not. So much convincing. <sighs> All right, I accept. Got a pen and paper? If you're searching for someone who sells that kind of merchandise, I'll give you one of their addresses, and you can try your luck. We'll reconvene at the appointed time by the pier. It doesn't matter if you show up or not. Um, so, since you are happy to give us this merchant's information, does that mean you can tell us exactly what we're after? You were willing to part with 500,000 more for something and you didn't even know what it was? <laughs> okay. Well, if you truly are as skilled as you claim, then you can beat the answer out of them when they become hostile. Look, if you've been making inquiries, then you have to know something by now. Tell me what you know so far, so I don't waste time repeating information. It's, it seems like some kind of knowledge. You know almost everything there is to know, but you're unable to compile this information because you've never seen the object before. This is what you've been looking for. That? Can store a fixed quantity of canned knowledge. It's like a miniature Akasha. 
anyone who links it to their personal Akasha terminal instantly becomes privy to its contents. Anyone? Correct. Anyone. Unlike the Akasha, which heavily regulates who can access what information, knowledge capsules can further contents without any requisites. Ah. That's amazing. Yep. It's essentially a convenient and harmless vestibule for knowledge. Unfortunately, it's illegal in Sumeru to privately possess or trade them. Oh. They were created as a means for scholars to transfer knowledge gained from Ermin Soul into the Akasha and are intended to be destroyed immediately after use. But despite strict regulations, some of these knowledge capsules will always escape destruction. After all, there will always be those in this world who are dissatisfied with life as designed for them by the Akasha and wish to change their fate. Over the past century, a wide variety of canned knowledge has been leaked from the academia. Now, in Port Ormos, the valuable ones are a means to Mora for the Aramites. Meanwhile, those which the Aramites deem to be useless to them occasionally prove useful to the common citizens and hapless academia students. Well, I think that about sums it up. Okay, seems like it's a knowledge capsule. Oh, so that's your true objective. I want to learn more about it. With our current arrangement, I don't believe I can offer an answer. Perhaps we can uh, negotiate further. <sighs> You're still resolved. Fine. Let's talk somewhere with fewer people. Lost in prosperity. Okay, we're gonna go right here. And let's continue our conversation here. If you wish to learn more about the knowledge capsule that the academia lost, then you must help me with something. What is it? I need you to find someone named Dory. Oh, this. Merchant. This. Unlike the peddlers who hawk inferior knowledge capsules, she often has quality goods in stock. Some say that as long as there is profit to be made, there is nothing she won't dare to sell. Oh. She's guarded against people from the academia because most of her wares don't comply with academia regulations. I think she blacklisted me. Oh. I met with her informant, but it soon became clear that they had no intention of letting me get any further. Mm. Become one of Dory's customers and earn her trust. This is my condition for further collaboration. Why do you want us to be with her? Oh. Until you complete this task, you don't have question privileges. Oh, fine. So how do we go about doing this? You two are outlanders who haven't been here for long, so Dory should view you as safe clients. I'll give you the informant's address and their contact password. Beyond the password, though, I have no way of knowing what other tricks she might have up her sleeve. You'll have to improvise. Mm. Uh, this is kind of nerve-wracking. The true challenge begins after you meet her. She has a keen nose for Mora and a shrewd eye for wares, and she only likes customers who she deems to have good taste. I'll prepare some funds for you. Buy her highest quality wares and earn her approval. Have you two heard of Elemental Sight? Oh yeah, I can use it. Oh, that's a surprise. I guess I'll have to hold you in higher regard. Anyway, that ability should resolve your issue. Here are two knowledge capsules. Tell me, can you detect any difference <laughs> in their quality? Oh, so we're going to identify them. Uh, they look the same to my mind. Try inspecting them with elemental sight. How'd it go? Did you see anything? Uh, okay. The one on the left shines brighter. Rumor has it that higher quality knowledge capsules generally appear brighter when viewed through elemental sight. 
Mm. That's because knowledge originates from Ermensoul, the root of Dendro power itself. Interesting. The more powerful the knowledge, the richer it is in Dendro energy. However, some can knowledge with a high concentration of elemental energy is of little use in contemporary times, so those capsules are of little value. Using elemental sight is merely a stopgap measure, but it should suffice for earning Dory's trust. Here's a sheet with the informant's location and contact password, and here is the Mora for purchasing canned knowledge. Uh. Don't be cheap. You'll need to spend to catch Dory's eye. If there's any Mora left over, just keep it. Oh, keep it. So we're gonna become... And be sure to exercise some caution. There have been Matra present in Port Ormos lately. Your efforts will be for naught if they catch you. Matra? Ooh, we don't know what it is, Paimon. Mm. They belong to the Academia's regulatory body. They also handle cases of illegal canned knowledge transactions. Like I said, the Academia has banned both their trade and possession. The Matra are razor sharp. You're in for nothing good if they lock their sights onto you. If you two want to back out, now's the time. I'm willing to take the risk. Okay. Then we have a deal. If you succeed in your dealings with Dory, come find me at the Wikella Funduk. We'll have an open discussion then. Ah. Looking at what Ellie the most, Dory's informant is a traitor near Old Ormos. Let's follow these instructions and try to get in contact with him. Okay, let me just read the instructions first. Wait, it's right here. Taken by my sold to customers. Okay. All right. Meet up with Dory's contact. Latish, here we are. Hello, what are you two looking to buy? Uh, we we want to buy some raw horror fruits, unripe raw. <laughs> what a unique palate! We have unripe horror fruits. But we usually keep them in the back. I'll have someone escort you. Following the paper, guys, past the first round. Ronak, these two want to buy unripe horror fruits. <laughs> Show them to the warehouse. Got it. You too. Please follow me. All right, the unripe you two fruits. You have a fascinating fashion sense. We haven't seen a customer wearing a Sumeru rose for quite some time. Okay, you're walking strangely on me. Very okay. Very strangely. Okay. On what? Whoops. What is this? Okay. All right. Before I retrieve your products, I need to confirm a few things. Oh. Uh, please forgive me, but we may not have sufficient stock for you today. Earlier, many of our para fruits were taken by mice. Congratulations to you. <laughs> Thanks. 
If better goods come in, you'll be the first to know. You look like you have some skill. Why don't I pick out some fruits that'll make you dizzy? Dizziness with a sense of t <laughs> heart stroke. Stand, we won't be able to fulfill your order. Why don't you two think things over? He's cautious of us. Let's take a closer look at Okay. First we read. So customer is a mouse. Taken by mouse sold to customers. Taken by okay. Packed in Sumeru style to purchase small amount. Packed in style to purchase in a bulk. Complain. Com complimenting us customer of skill corresponds to Howard food that causes dizziness and ringing ears. Com complimenting a customer of irradiation corresponds to Howard food that causes heat stroke. We are rose. Um, we are morning flower. Looking to buy canned <laughs> knowledge. Okay. I should note it now. Before I retrieve your pro please forgive me, but we may not have sufficient stock for you today. Earlier, many of our para fruits were taken by mice. Congratulations to you. <laughs> Thanks. If better goods come in, you'll be the first to know. You look like you have some skill. Why don't I pick out some fruits that'll make you dizzy? Dizziness with a size of tinnitus, please. Yep, yeah, that's the right answer. But eating hara fruit that makes your head and ears ring sounds like a bad life decision. Would you like your hara fruits to be packaged in the Sumero City or Port Ormo style? I'm guessing that you're going for a more traditional pack. Wait a second. Sumero City style means we're only buying a few things. It won't take us to see Do- Ah. Uh, He's cautious of us. Let's get- Before I retrieve- uh, Please forgive me, but we may not have sufficient stock for you today. Earlier, many of our para fruits were taken by mice. <laughs> Thanks. If better goods come in, you'll be the first to know. Yeah. Well, you look like you have some skill. Why don't I pick out some fruits that'll make you dizzy? Dizziness would say, yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, that's the right answer. But eating hara fruit that makes- Would you like your hara fruits to be packaged in the Sumero City or Port Ormo style? Port Ormo. Wow, you two sure are generous customers. We'll be sure to package your products beautifully. Okay, everything has been confirmed. Miss Dory is waiting for you up at. Shoot! It's the Matra! Run! What? The Matra? Where? Oh, hey, let's say we're done for if they catch us! We gotta get out of here! Oh, no! We don't know this area, so let's follow that apartment! Okay, I don't know where to go now. Okay. Flee to get her way to run, Nack. He's, He's still running. Oh no. Okay. We're good. We're running. Oh. Okay, we're here. Oh. So you were the one who 
was calling up to us just now. But, uh, are we definitely gonna be safe here? These two good customers wish to buy some horror fruit, Miss Dory. And if there's nothing else, I'll just excuse myself. Oh, very good. Thank you. Can you show us your projects? Take this one and this, and as well as this one. Ah, you really got a good head on your shoulders. Oh, quite the eye for quality. I'll take these, please and thank you. Oh my god, that's, it's gonna be a lot of more. Trick you into spending more. All the cat knowledge we just bought is easily worth half a million more. If we spend just a little more, we can get something worth one million more. Isn't that a fantastic deal? Huh. Don't you want to try it yourself? 
Just you just want to see me try it. Uh, okay. I'll have a look. Alright, elemental sight. So, what did you see? They all seem to be equally bright. So, they're all worth about the same amount? Yep. Fine by me. We want to meet with the Dendro Archon. Yeah, she just wants to meet the God of Wisdom and ask her about something important. We've been in Sumeru for a while now, but we still haven't found a way. When we heard that the Academia had lost something that might be related to the gods, we came here in case it turned out to be our lucky break. In that case, you're on the right track. A short while ago, the Academia lost a knowledge capsule in the desert. It's supposedly a divine knowledge capsule. Use it, and you'll gain the wisdom of the gods. In the desert. That's what we need to find out next. Wait. Your goal is to find it too? I won't deny that. I am investigating because I'm curious as to what the divine knowledge capsule truly is. As you know, the Aramites in Port Ormos also have their eyes on it. 
It is an extremely precious item. The knowledge contained within may bring great power or wealth to whoever has it in their possession. Several brigades have been vying for ownership of it as of late, but there is still no victor. My personal finances and connections cannot compete with those of the Aramites. After attempting various methods, I finally managed to reach a tentative agreement with several brigades. I agreed to forego ownership of the Divine Knowledge Capsule in exchange for the opportunity to study it. After all, there's no harm in understanding what it is. However, there are those who are less amenable to negotiation, such as those from Ayn al-Akhmar. They adamantly believe that the Divine Knowledge Capsule contains the Scarlet King's power, and that he will return to this world when they obtain it. They refuse to let anyone from the Academia tarnish their deity's soul. So you kept hounding them because they refused to cooperate with you? Oh. Yes. Ainul Akhmar isn't exactly wealthy, but its members are determined to get that capsule by any means necessary. To that end, they've resorted to many methods more foul than fair in order to amass sufficient funds. So, I've been sabotaging their business to force them into negotiating with me. The Divine Knowledge Capsule should be up for a secret auction within the next few days. Each brigade will place their own bid, and the prize will be covertly given to the winner. To ensure the capsule's security, and to evade the mantra's notice, the winning brigade will not publicly disclose their victory. Unless I know whose hands the Divine Knowledge Capsule ends up in, my agreements with them will fall through. Dory is the most reliable source of information, but that avenue was previously closed to me. With you on board now, the situation is different. In other words, you wanted us to befriend Dory so you could find out where the Divine Knowledge Capsule is. Yes, you can say that. But this arrangement harms none of us. The day after tomorrow, go back to Dory and try to purchase information on the Divine Knowledge Capsule's whereabouts. If she has no information, wait two days and approach her again. If I get the opportunity to study the Divine Knowledge Capsule, I will relay my findings to you. Will that suffice as compensation? Okay, thank you. Okay, then we'll meet up in two days. Do you want to try using a knowledge capsule? Sure, I can teach you. Doing so right under the academia's nose is a bit problematic, though. What do you say we head to the outskirts of town? Hmm? Map. Oh, we're near. All right, this place works. Show me the capsule you purchased. Yeah. Hmm. Sword fighting techniques eight. Combat class knowledge capsule. This class is something of a rare find these days, since most have been taken by the Aramites to augment their battle capabilities. Really? Oh, yeah, what a great find! If you want to determine the efficacy of this capsule, I can evaluate your combat ability. However, effects will likely be minimal if you already possess a high amount of strength. We can conduct a controlled experiment where you fight two battles, one before using this knowledge capsule and one after. While you fight, we can use an Akasha terminal to monitor your various physical parameters. There may be variances in your physical strength between the two tests, as well as a disparity in your opponent's abilities. But don't worry. I'll run statistical analyses afterward to mitigate any confounding effects. Right? So why are you risking getting caught by the mantra for this capsule? 
I'm also curious about this. We are unable to understand the researchers' actions. Most cases can be attributed to curiosity. This is but one theory. Oh, what is it? Alright, let's begin the test. Just fight as you normally do. Alright. <laughs> oh, this? You're in for a little shock. Holy smokes! The lag is crazy now. It lagged so hard. Right. I'll link your Akasha terminal to record data. The next step is to use this knowledge capsule. Hold it in your hand. I'll help you establish a connection with it so you can activate its power. Okay. Open your inventory and use the can knowledge. Alright. No, it's definitely not that. Can knowledge, Peter Fog. I love that. Am I blind or? Okay, open your inventory and you still uh, can knowledge. Okay, as if I saw countless sword wielding features fighting one moment and then in the next they disappear into recesses of my memory. I felt something for a moment. Yeah. Alright, time for round two. Fight with the same composure as before. Oh no, more lag. <laughs> oh, okay, that was quick. Now, I'll start recording data again. I'm strong. How's it going? Well, the knowledge capsule you purchased did improve her combat capability. During the second fight, her overall fighting performance increased by 0.073%. Oh. Wait, how much? 0 0.073%. Of course. This could be because she is so powerful that the capsule's contents were unable to produce a substantial increase. At the very least, this test allowed me to gain more insight into you two. Our deal seems increasingly worth my investment. Ooh. I'm heading back to Akela Punduk. I await your response in two days' time. This is more of for when you ask Dory for information. Pay her as much as she requests. 
All right. Wait until s when it wait until seven two days from now. All right. There. Okay. She's still angry from this day on. Whoops. Whoops. Whoops, sorry. Huh. I like to buy info on whereabouts of the divine knowledge capsule. Oh, <laughs> I need customers with pockets as deep as yours, but undoubtedly crave something more profound than ordinary can knowledge. But you know, that kind of information isn't going to be cheap. After all, I had to work really hard to weasel my way into the auction site. And not to mention that if anyone found out that I was the leaker, I would be in big Trouble. But how can we be sure your information is accurate? I'm much curious. How do you just happen to have this kind of info the moment we need it? <laughs> <laughs> because to me, anything of value is what I consider to be my supply. Therefore, I must always be aware of what's hot on the market in order to secure more sales. As for the information's authenticity, well, you've no need to worry about that. To take a picture of the transaction. That way, no one can dispute it. Name your price. It's always a pleasure doing business with such sturdy patrons. <clears throat> now that you've paid in full, here's the scoop. The Divine Knowledge Capsule was purchased yesterday by a certain misery, the leader of Ayn el Ahmar. Ah. Uh. Ayn el Ahmar? You mean the Aramites who worship the Scarlet King? Ah, so you're already familiar. Them. The group has done everything in their power to obtain the Divine Knowledge Capsule. After all, we believe it contains the power of the Scarlet King. And that Divine Knowledge Capsule is unlike any other can knowledge I've seen before. It was glowing bright red. The capsule is clearly visible in the picture I took. You can look for yourself. Ah. Uh. <laughs> okay, what does it look like? Oh, we can't see it. It's red. Going down. We done. Oh, hey, Bill. We got the info you wanted. Really? All right. Let's hear it. Yep. It's in the hands of the Aaron Al Amar. Dory even gave us evidence to verify the intel. Have a look. Huh. Huh. Look at that. 
clear as day. It must have taken some guts just to infiltrate the scene of the Aramites' transaction. But then, to get close enough to take a picture like this. Bold move, Dory. Very bold move. All right. The person in this picture is indeed Misery, the leader of Ain al-Akhmar. And the glowing red capsule he's holding appears to be the Divine Knowledge Capsule. In which case, if we play our cards right, when we confront them next week, we should be able to force them to show their hand. At first, Paimon didn't get why you were provoking these Ain el-Akhmar guys. But now, it sort of makes sense. Everything's playing right into your hands. After we defeat them, we can finally have a serious talk with their boss and get them to lend us the Divine Knowledge Capsule. Thank you for your time and efforts. Take a few days off while I make some preparations. Let's meet up again on the afternoon of the arranged date, 3 o'clock sharp. We'll be there. See you then. Yeah. Okay. A few days later, on the day of the meeting with the El El Mara Pod. Where can he be? Oh, there he is. I can't even say the Aramite group right. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Let's head to the pier in front of Faro's lighthouse. Go to the agreed location. Ugh. show up. It was I who demanded that these negotiations take place. I was more worried that you might go back on your promise. But to your credit, it appears that you're sticking to your word. This is turning into quite an occasion. I also brought some backup. I assume you don't mind. Backup? Aren't you the brat from the restaurant the other day? You've come to support this lunatic because he helped you out? <laughs> Fine. Your funeral. I'm not going to mince my words. Once we're done with you, you'll be nothing more than fish food. Get them, boys! Where? Uh-oh. Here they come. Uh, good luck, you two. Oh, we're gonna get a trial of him? Nah, never mind. That was quick. Whoa, cutscene. I hope this doesn't lag. Academia scum. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> What's going on? Finally. Oh. Did you use it? Great. Now we can. <laughs> What's happening? What? What is happening? Did this? This is. Did his dingy majiggy turn red? Oh, it's Akasha. It's called an Akasha. 
Do not impede our work. Is that understood? I'll hate them. Of course. I was only trying to help. Take him away! Oh. Okay. Forget me. Speaking of which, Hypatia did mention. Yovanda life going insane. The state that man is now in suggests that this is a similar situation. This divine knowledge capsule does appear to be linked to the gods, but beyond that, it doesn't seem anything like the rumors suggest. Possessing it doesn't grant you divine wisdom or power. Did you hear what he said? World, forget me. What could that possibly mean? Uh. That's exactly what I heard before I had Ermin's soul. The that no. So All Hagen has it. has also reached its end. Point. Sorry. Ah, okay. Yep. Until we meet again, we're going to go to the festival, and he has that capsule right on his pocket. And it's done. Just like that. Ever so close. Well, I'm gonna continue Act 2. In the next part. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you want to. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.